fake Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. They've been released, and here's how to spot the difference. On the left, we have an official Switch Pro controller, and on the right, we have the knockoff. They actually made it look near enough identical. They've used the same mouldings, so initially, when you first look at it, it's, it's not obvious which is fake. The official one has a semi-transparent front, so you can see the circuitry behind it. And the fake also has a semi-transparent front, but it's not as transparent as an official one. So if you can do a side-by-side, -side, you can tell the difference. Other than that, they're very, very close. Because the logo is missing from the front, that's kind of an obvious sign, um, but it wouldn't take much for them to actually print a logo on the fake. As with the back, um, Nintendo's embossed on the official one, so you can kind of see that, but on the fake it's, it's missing. Unfortunately, because I've used the same mouldings on these, both the front panel and the back panel of the fake actually fits on the original Pro Controller and vice versa. So you could just swap the plates over and then the missing logos, <laughs> they're not really a good sign. It's better to look at the battery in the back. On the official one, we've got these little multilingual warning signs written across it, which you can see without taking the controller apart, which is handy. And on the fake, there's actually a different battery in there. It's got a graphic of a bin. It's missing the warning signs. It's also got these little triggers at the top, which are brown, quite light brown, so you can see them on the fake. In comparison, the official Pro Controller, they're quite dark and not really noticeable. I'd say these are probably better warning signs than the logo on the front and the back, because it would be quite easy to change them over. Looking at the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, the plus and the minus buttons here, they don't stick out very far. They're only protruding about a millimetre or so. But if you look at the fake Pro Controller, the plus and minus buttons, they stick out a few millimetres more compared to the official one. So that would be a telltale sign that the controller isn't quite what it seems. So the only other way to tell is to look inside the fake Pro Controller. Um, if you're daring and you want to take it apart, then the first step is taking the two screws from the handles. There's just two Phillips double zero screws that you need to take out. This is actually the same as the official one. All the screw positions are actually the same as the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. You can just pull the two little handles off now. There's nothing holding them in place. And the next step you'll need to remove the back panel. Let's get rid of these screws. It's got four screws holding the back panel in here, 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 and here. You just need to take those four out using the same screwdriver and you should be able to get access to the back of the Pro Controller. These screw positions are the same on the fake and the official Pro Controller. The only difference between the two is you actually use different screws. Once I get this off I'll show you. So here's the screw from the fake Pro Controller. It's black and it's got a pointed tip. Here's the screw from the original Pro Controller. It's silver and has a flat tip. There's quite a difference, so if you're unscrewing your back panel and you see these black ones, just put it there, then you're probably unscrewing a fake. It's worth noting they do use black screws on the handles, but they're flat tips, they're not pointed. We'll just put this over here now and we're going to grab the official Pro Controller so we can do a quick comparison. I've already taken the um, screws off the handles and off the back panel already, so I can just slide these off without wasting your time. If you're taking the back bit off, I tend to find it's easy to do it from the bottom here, so you can just pry it up and off, obviously when you've got the screws taken off already. As I mentioned before, these do use the same mouldings, so the back panel from the fake and the back panel from the original are interchangeable, so on it goes, not a problem and this is probably why it's not a good idea to judge off whether it's got Nintendo printed on the front or the back. They can both be switched over just as easy as each other really. 
that's if they just don't print their own ones. Um, we'll take these back panels off now, put them back in the right place, fake next to the fake, and the official back panel next to the official Pro Controller. With the backs off you can see the batteries better. Um, we'll take the one out the official controller. See, there it is. This is the side you're viewing when you're looking through the back panel with the battery in place. It's got the multilingual warning signs on it here. And you can see that on the flip side it's got the official Nintendo branding. And it's actually CTR003. That's actually the same as the Nintendo 3DS battery. Um, just keep an eye when you're looking that it's got Nintendo printed on it, CTR003. Taking out the fake one. You can see that it's completely different when it's in its placement in the back of the controller. Um, you've got warning signs on the wrong side of the battery in comparison and there's no Nintendo logo to be seen anywhere. In terms of capacity, it's exactly the same. Three point 7 volts, 1300 milliamp hours, and 5 watts. Physically, it's also the same size. The only difference between them is the printing's on the wrong side. So, when you look at the positive and negative connections on the batteries, you can see they're actually in different places. Here, it's on the left when the text is the right way around, and on the official one, it's on the right when the text is the right way around. Besides that, there's not much difference between them. But it's definitely a lot easier to tell when they're out of the uh, out of the case. If you look at where the batteries are actually placed in the case, the fake is blank, has nothing printed on there, and the original has kind of C markings and other bits printed in there. These are missing completely on the uh, fake. Looking at the handles here and here, there's two little holes, and you can actually see the rumble motors poking through. They're gold and rounded on the fake one. And that's because they're little impulse rumble motors. In comparison, the official Pro Controller shows a kind of grey block. And this is the casing from the HD rumble in the official controller. So if you're purchasing a fake, you're not going to get HD rumble. They've cheaped out on that. If you look at the top where the triggers are, I mentioned this earlier, but you can see the board there is quite a dark colour on the original. It doesn't really stand out, it's not noticeable. On the fake, it's a lot lighter colour and you can see it quite clearly when the back's off. I won't be taking the controllers apart any further in this video, as I know most people wouldn't be able to do that, or wouldn't be confident doing that, so I'll just show you how to put the stuff back together now. Get the battery, make sure the terminal's on the right side, push it in, and pop it down. Get your back plate, place it on, Give it a good push so it clicks into place. I'll just get rid of this one. Remember this back panel is held on by four screws. So you'll need to put the screws here, 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 and here when you do it. So these will be black on the fake one. And on the official Pro Controller, these are actually silver screws. So make sure you're putting the silver ones back in here. There should be four of them. I'm just going to fast forward through this. Just don't over tighten the screws when you put them in. Okay, so all four of those are in now. We're okay to put the handles on next. You'll see the handles have got a kind of a line down them. This matches up with the Pro Controller handle. And you'll see this also got a curved back and a kind of flatter back. The curved back goes towards the back of the controller and the flat side goes to the front. If you get them and you try and slide them on, they should go on easily. If you're forcing them on, then they're probably not lined up properly. Once you've popped those on, grab your two remaining screws. On the fake controller, these will be black and a pointed tip. On the official controller, these will be black with a flat tip. You can use the same screwdriver as before, just screw them in. Fairly tight. Same on the other side.
the reason you're screwing them fairly tight is so that you don't slide them off by accident. And that's it. Hold on. <laughs>